Hey everyone, it's the Ionic Guy here. In today's video, we're going to take the car out for a late afternoon, early evening drive, and we're going to see how Highway Driving Assist Level 2 does. So the difference between Highway Drive Assist Level 2 and Level 1.5, which you'll find in the base model here in the United States, is that 1.5 does not do automatic lane changes. So if you want automatic lane change, you have to step up to an SEL or limited trim. But shadows are kind of growing long. The sun is starting to set. We're going to see how the system does with that transition from light to dark, which in my opinion is probably the hardest time of the day it's going to need to uh, perform. So let's hit the road before the sun goes down and check out how it does. So if you're anything like me, you were probably disappointed when you got your Ionic 5 and you didn't see that there was any overhead sunglass storage. So I went out of my way and I solved that problem. Here's my sunglasses and here's your new best friend, the dashboard sunglass holder for your Ionic 5. Just clicks right onto your magnetic pad next to the driver display and your sunglasses go right on it. So if you're like me and you drive at night and during the day, then you can have one for your sunglasses and one for your regular glasses for when you're driving at night. My design utilizes two rare earth magnets that keep it firmly in place on your dashboard. It's not gonna move around on you when you're carving those corners. These are made out of PETG and they won't melt or soften in the heat of your car. My design will work well with thick plastic frame glasses such as Ray-Ban Wayfarers, but not so much with Ray-Ban Aviators or wire frame glasses. So these are available on Etsy for $17.50 plus shipping and handling. The link is in the description. Thanks for checking them out. So here we go, we're merging on the highway. Give it some beans. <clears throat> All right, so I just activated the system. I'm gonna set the cruise control to 73 and we're just gonna hang out here in the slow lane. So I'll take my hands off, keep them close by. This is a blind hill up here. So we still got a little bit of light out today. All right, it's, it's staying pretty well centered. I'll give it a little correction here. A little, little heavier traffic than I expected at 7.15 tonight. There's usually a lot less cars on the road. There's the keep hands on steering wheel message. And if you just give it a little bit of a nudge, It'll give you another 20, 30 seconds before it'll yell at you. But these are some gentle curves here. It's handling them nicely. Staying very well centered. Still not yelling at me. <clears throat> what I really like when I'm on the highways, I have this this screen here up, which shows you the traffic around you. It shows you the lane markings, the lane center marking, how far you are from the car in front of you. As long as you're on a fairly straight section of highway, it won't yell at you for a while. So this section up ahead is gonna be a, a pretty straight section going uphill. So this car will use machine learning to learn your driving style and how you like to drive. So if you like to hug one side of the lane when you pass a big truck, it'll learn that. And I've seen it in action and maybe we'll see that here in a, a minute or two. But 
but you can see I can go 20, 30, 40 seconds without touching the wheel before it yells at me. So in that regard, I could see this potentially being upgraded to at least a higher level autonomy at some point in the future. It seems like it has the processing capability and power to be able to figure out what it's doing on its own. I don't think it would need a hardware upgrade. All right, the lines here are a little, uh, the road markings here on this section of highway aren't very good, so it just kind of panicked right there a little bit when we were passing that tractor trailer. The lane marking here is not very good between the center lane and the left lane, but it's still doing a pretty good job at detecting where the lane starts and ends. So I'm going to slow down here and try the automatic lane change because I want to get off this next exit. Signal over. You can see the green light come on. Checks for clearance. We moved over. Obviously, it's not nearly as quick as you could change the lanes yourself. So I don't find myself using it all that often. It's a neat party trick. But like I said, it's not super practical. It's cool, but it's not practical. I can change lanes in a split second versus five, ten seconds sometimes. I will say I did take a, a 150 mile round trip drive this past weekend, and it really does alleviate some of the, the stress that you get from driving. I mean, just knowing that it's, it's there as a backup, obviously, most of the time you're going to keep your hands on the wheel anyway, but it just kind of, it gives you a little less fatigue than you normally would on a long drive. So the sun's starting to go down now. My headlights are on. Let's try the lane change. There we go. When I first got the car and it was still learning my driving technique, I did notice that it would wander in its lane a lot more than it does now. You would see the wheel doing a lot of micro corrections, and now after having the car for approaching 3,000 miles, maybe it learned my driving technique. I don't know, but it definitely seems more confident in the way the steering wheel actuates. And it doesn't make you sick to your stomach anymore. I didn't use the system a whole lot when I first got the car just because it felt so weird to see the steering wheel just going back and forth while you're going down the highway at 75 miles an hour. It seems that when it's following a car in front of you, it'll give you a lot longer before it asks you to put your hands back on the wheel. I think maybe because it has something to follow, that's what does it. But this truck in front of me is swerving all over the highway, so let's see what it does. And what's really cool is how it represents your car in the lane is how your car is actually positioned in the lane. So if it thinks you're close to one side of the lane and hugging it, it'll show you in the screen. It's just another cool representation of what's actually happening around you. So let's move back into slow lane. Didn't seem to want to do that lane change for whatever reason. So now it's over the line. You can see it's over the line. It's hugging the right side of the lane. close for comfort.
doesn't seem to like these these corners too much here. These might be asking a little too much of it. Now this truck's cutting me off. And now it just disabled the system. I'm not sure why it did that for a split second, but now it's back online. Like I said, the lane markings on our highways here in central Connecticut are horrible. But we'll go one more exit and then we'll turn around and head back. The sun should be set by about then, so it'll be a little bit darker. Let's try the automatic lane change now. There it goes. So that one wasn't too bad. Let's go ahead and do our automatic lane change again. That one worked well. Alright, let's see if it'll take the exit ramp. No, not so much. Alright guys, we're going to hop back on the highway here now that the sun's starting to go down and we'll see what it does. I love the acceleration in this car. I absolutely love it. It's so addicting. Just going to get over to the lane that we need to be in. It ends pretty abruptly up here and we'll activate the system. <clears throat> so no car ahead of me. Wow, this is a long one. This is going to push a minute. Very impressive. Alright, here comes a curve. Keep hands on steering wheel. It's doing a good job staying in the center. Doing quite well. This stretch of highway here is probably the twistiest type of highway I would ever feel comfortable using this on. These are pretty big, long swept curves. Like some of the highways closer to the major cities, I don't know if I would trust it on something like that. Now let's see what it does if I don't keep my hands on the steering wheel through these types of turns. Interesting. The warning just came on and I did not have my hands on the steering wheel. Hey, look at that, guys. I just hit 3,000 miles on my Ionic 5. That was really impressive. That was a tough test right there, and it did it admirably. And it told me to put my hands on and then did it. So I don't know what the deal was there, but it seemed to work. Keep hands on steering wheel. I'm going to keep them off. See how you like that. Okay, it's giving me an extra warning here. Still warning me. All right, highway 
free drive assist canceled. Now it sees I'm driving again. So it seems like it'll give you a warning, then it'll give you another warning, 20, 30 seconds later, start flashing on the screen, then it cancels it, and if you have iPedal engaged, it's basically just gonna slam on the brakes. So, it'd be nice if it changed to level one, or level zero, so that you just coasted, but maybe that's just to give you a shock to try and wake you up if for whatever reason you did fall asleep in your seat. So we're back to that section with the badly painted lines. And it's definitely a little confused. I can tell it's wandering about a little bit. So here's another long stretch on this straightaway. It doesn't care if my hands aren't on the wheel. Let's move over and get off this exit here. I'm gonna cancel, move over. So it will not change lanes unless it senses your hand is on the wheel, which is probably a smart thing. But now that we've seen how it does on the highway, we'll take it on some secondary roads that are higher speed. They're not quite totally back roads, but we'll see how they do on these secondary roads where the speed limit is 45, 50 miles an hour. I know this is not the intended use case, but I'm sure it'll still do something. So we'll set the cruise control to 51. So interesting. If hit, you hit your normal cruise control button to activate it on a secondary road, it must know you're on a secondary road and it won't activate the steering assist but you can hit that button and it's it's steering right now but it doesn't seem like it wants to do that by default and it's doing a pretty good job hands on the steering wheel but the speed limit on this road is 45 I'm doing a little too much It definitely warns you more on these types of roads. It also doesn't show you any information about where you are in your lane. All right, so we got a head-on car coming. doing a decent job. I definitely hesitate more to let it do its own thing though, just because of the nature of this road. This is a really narrow bridge here, and this is a tight turn right after. I didn't want to I didn't want to give it the opportunity to do anything on that corner. But we have another sharp corner up ahead. And it's thinking about taking it. And yeah, that was too tight for it. It didn't want to take it. Okay. So that was not good. It's not capable of seeing the road ahead very easily on these secondary roads. It's taking this corner, but this is a very broad corner.
Unfortunately, I don't think this system is going to be anywhere near like autopilot where they get regular updates to improve it. Something that I do like about the system is that you can activate both levels of autonomy separately. So if you want to steer and have adaptive cruise control, you can do that just by pressing this lower left button on the right side of the steering wheel. And vice versa, if you don't want adaptive cruise control on but you want it to keep its lane, you can also do that by pressing the top right button, as I will show you right now, that disconnects it. Then you can turn on auto steering and you can manage the throttle pedal all you want. So it is nice in that regard that it gives you the option. Not everybody feels comfortable with the automatic steering at this point. Let's see how it takes these corners this time. fairly well, no yelling. So the sun's completely set now. As you can see out here in rural Connecticut, we don't have any street lights. So just the headlights of the car and the car sees just fine. So let me know down in the comments what your experience has been with the Highway Driving Assist Level 2 or Level 1.5. They're basically the same. I'm interested to know if you guys have had good experiences, bad experiences. I've read a little bit of everything on the forum, on the Facebook group. Some people love it, some people hate it, some people don't trust it. I'm pretty comfortable with it. I put a decent amount of trust in it doing its job. Obviously it's not full autonomy and it's not going to be. So you need to take it with a grain of salt and really consider what type of situation you're putting it in. Thanks for going for that quick ride with me. I think we all learned a lot about how the system functions today. And for those of you who don't already own the car, are you looking forward to the system or do you not really care? As always, thanks for watching. Hit that like button if you enjoyed the video. Subscribe if you haven't already done so. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Take care.